Welcome to the Christian Youth Camp Podcast. At Camp Chioka, it has been our mission for over 50 years to lead campers into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ and each other. These conversations share the heart of our camp family in efforts to lead us all into a deeper relationship with the Lord. Today, I have for y'all a mother-daughter duo that you do not want to miss. My camp mom, Mrs. Missy Williams, has been coming to Camp Chioka since 1980 and raising her children here, including Callie Grace, who was my camper, is one of my friends, and is now fellow staff. They'll talk with us today about what camp means to them, as well as the importance of relationships in their life, whether it be with God, with one another, or with their fellow camp family. Their family inspires me so much, and it is an honor to be loved by them. My heart is overflowing from today's conversation, and I hope that y'all grow to love them as much as I do. So today I have Missy and Callie Williams, a Camp Chioka family, through and through. What does Camp Chioka mean to each of y'all? Um, that is a huge question. Um, Camp Chioka is kind of grounded in who we are as people. I met Callie's dad here at camp. Uh, more importantly, I met Jesus here at camp. Um, I have friends from camp that I met when I was a middle schooler um, that have been my friend for almost 40 years so what camp means to me is almost too big of a question yeah it's it's huge it's yeah. part of who I am I, I, I've said before I am who I am because of Camp Chioka yeah and Kelly how have you seen that play out the same in your life I don't know just the sense of like camp is what we do and camp is where we belong and so just like you go to school you go to camp you go to school, you go to camp. And I mean, what was my first year, 2004? This is what you do. It's, it's who you are. And so just coming back every summer and just learning more to shine your light, to take what we are here yeah. out into the world. And then we like spend ourselves <laughs> until we're almost empty and we come back to camp and it's like, oh, whew, I'm back. And yes. you fill yourself back up again so that you can go back out into the world and spill camp out to every place that you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Miss Missy, I know you started coming here in 1980. Can mm -hmm. you tell the story about how you learned about camp? So, my, um, I didn't really, in my early years, grow up in a Christian home and a neighbor shared the gospel with my mother. And she was baptized, and our family started going to church when I was nine years old. And so uh, one Sunday, as the adults are visited in the foyer, uh, I look over at the big, huge, you know, church foyers have the big track racks and everything. Mm -hmm. And there was a brochure for Camp Chioka, a summer Christian camp in Louisiana. And I was pretty adventurous and said, hey, Mom, this is cool. I want to go. <laughs> Nobody from my church would go with me, so a friend from school came. Um, and she didn't love it. She never came back. But I was hooked, um, mainly because of the people that were yeah. here. And again, and that immediate sense of belonging. Uh, and I came back the next summer by myself telling my mom, I don't need to take somebody with me. I, I'll have people there. Um, and came as a camper for several years. And by the time I hit uh, 14, um, they were like, you can come volunteer. You can be here all summer. That was the beginning of my, just be here all summer yeah. and work and work and work and work uh, and still be a camper and work and work and work. So, um, Can you talk some about yours and Karen Bromley's friendship? So I met Karen um, Dankelson then uh, when we were 13. Um, Chris Howard, of course, was here. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris being one of those uh, examples of a godly wife and mother that I had never had before. Big, huge influence on all of us here. Um, Karen and I met. We're always, Chris put us in the same cabin. Uh, typically, we had the same counselors year, year by yeah. year. Cindy Murray, Donna Alexander, <laughs> Jesse Shackelford. Love those ladies. Um, so that was a sense of community. And... Um, just growing with Karen as a friend, but spiritually, um, all night prayer session was our favorite thing. That same group of girls, and we would write letters throughout the year. You know, how are your dad's eyes? Mm -hmm. How how's this situation that we prayed about at yeah. all night prayer session? Um, and Karen and I wrote letters constantly all year long, and couldn't wait to see each other. And um, we were in each other's weddings. Um, 
had kids together, raised kids together, um, worked together here as directors, um, 40 plus years, you know, of friendship with her. Um, when I was in college, I skipped out on the dorm room and just lived with Karen, you know, <laughs> we just have, we just have formed just a bond of spiritual friendship, emotional friendship, being there for each other. Yeah you know, from meeting each other. What's your advice to have a lasting friendship for that long? Because that's so incredible to me. Um, Karen challenges me. Karen never Mm -hmm. lets me settle. Mm -hmm. Um, If she sees something in my life that needs to improve, she'll come to me even in tears. Miss, this is what I see. This is what you've got to do. We pray together. We constantly pray together. We we will call each other and say, I I need to pray and we'll meet and and we'll pray. I just love, like, um, like we have church on Wednesday nights. It starts at 6.30, and Mom will be getting her purse and walking out the door at 5 o'clock. I'm like, where are you going? She's like, oh, I'm going to pray with Karen. I'll see you later. She's like, wow. I love that. And, you know, the years that we were directors together, we would have our counselor list, and we would get together, and we would – and I cry every time I pray. I, I just <laughs> – I mean, when you think about this, because every day. I cry every day. Every when day. you think about the awesomeness <laughs> of that, you're getting to talk to the Creator of the universe, and that He wants you to talk to Him, it's almost overwhelming. But Karen and I would, we would have our list of counselors, and we would, we would pray for each counselor by name, consistently every week, and work in this person, and let camp, you know, live, let them do these things for their campers, and. We would pray for the kitchen staff and the nurse and over the campers for safety and blessings. And and then when we would get here, we would go, you know, to the gates and the cabins and yeah. we would just pray. Our relationship is huge about, you know, prayer yeah. together. But also just the fact that she wants me to be the best I can be for the Lord. Yeah. And she she challenges me and she encourages me and she listens. She's just, you know, an incredible friend. Um and concerned about my spiritual growth, and I hope I do that for her as well. It's so beautiful to hear how that's fed into your prayer life because of what a prayer warrior you've been for me, and that you're someone I just feel so able to go to. I was talking to you a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, Miss Missy, I literally did not even know you, and I like just went to you because you're a person that people feel like they can go to, um, Thanks, which is cool to hear like how that started. <laughs> but Kelly, like watching that growing up and seeing those friendships and also coming to camp every year, like, what have your friendships here meant to you? Like, whether it's yeah. counselors or camp rats sure. or whoever. Um, I just think that's one of the, like, one of the many draws to camp. And, like, I was talking to one of my sweet friends from school, like, two weeks ago, I think. And I was just telling her, like, I'm missing camp. I'm missing my friends. Like, look forward to this all year long. Like, I just miss my sweet friends. And she was like, I wish I had that. Uh, and I was like, it just hit me so hard. I was like, Wow. <laughs> Because I really have, because I really have that, and how blessed I am that Mm -hmm. like these fifty people are from literally all over the country, and these are the people that you want to be with the most, and like those eight weeks that you have together are just so precious in that time together. You just, I don't know, I I can't even explain how much that it means to me. Like, well, it's such a deeper, more meaningful Mm -hmm. friendship because of the spiritual connection that you have. Because yes, you're vulnerable with each other. You bear your heart and soul. You confess your sins. You you share triumphs. You know, Um, I remember just a couple of summers ago when you know Matthew Inlow was. We were so worried about his health. Mm -hmm. And oh my word, I will never forget. I might cry. Um, (laughs) Matthew had like. Some tests to run or something, and um, we were waiting I was, for results. We were waiting for results, and I'm walking back from the pool, um, and I see probably 15 guys standing outside the country store, just hollering, celebrating, hugging, jumping up and down. I'm like, what is going on over here? It's a party, and he had just gotten good test results. Yeah, and like they were just celebrating, like genuine praying, celebration, singing, and praise, yeah. and just they were that. just crying and praying. It was just such a beautiful testament to. How much friendship? I have chills all over. <laughs> yeah, how much relationship? And just 
And and we talked before about just the feeling of belonging out here. When mm-hmm. I was a teenager and Mike Kellett was here, he has always been so close to Mike and I, my husband Mike and I. Um, he was a youth minister at White Fair Road. And him just, I would come year after year from my home church in Mississippi by myself. Okay. And he said, you don't need a group to come with you because you belong with us. Mm-hmm. You belong here. You are a part. Oh. Just those words to a young teenage girl to know I always belong here. And now you live here and that's the church that you raised your family at. Yes. Mm-hmm. And for my for me wanting my children, the beauty of pulling my children into this was now my kids know they I know always. I know where I always belong. And that's here. Yes. Yeah. I love that so much. And it's cool because I feel like friendships here are just kind of expedited in a special way. Mm-hmm. Um, and like a I week mean, is a life. I think I've seen you three times in my life. <laughs> 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 I got to camp this year I'm like wow this is my third time seeing Callie and <laughs> it's been like exactly a year and I know Callie because she was in my cabin so much better than I know mm-hmm. a lot of people I live with transparency so vulnerability real yeah. you got to be real yeah, yeah. so those so, are so it matters so easy to be authentic when you're surrounded by people who want you to grow and who want and who want relationship with you and you, you want know, to push you to be the best that you can be. And want what's best for your life. Mm-hmm. So Karen and David were dating in high school. David was not a Christian. So really? Mike Kellett was like, we're going to convert him or we're going to cut him loose. <laughs> and so we were all in on it. It was a conspiracy for the Lord. We were like, <laughs> for the Lord. We were like, we got to get David here. You know, he wasn't going to come. Missionary things, dating. <laughs> and I don't want to tell David's story, but things blew up at home and we got David here that summer. Yeah. And and it we prayed earnestly in tears. He's baptizing that pool. <laughs> and today... He's an elder at our church. He is yeah. one of the godliest men I know. One of my closest friends. I mean, I brought that heartboard note that he wrote me in 1987. <laughs> Just the things that David has done for the kingdom of God. And I had a part in that because in 1987, I prayed for him. Wow. Because of my love for Karen. Yeah. And because of my love for him, because the best decision anybody can ever make. You know, my husband tells me all the time, Miss, you are the second best thing that has ever happened to me. And that is the most beautiful thing he can say to me. Because the first best thing was that he obeyed the gospel. And today is his rebirth day. He was baptized on this day at Camp Chioka. That pool. (laughs) And that pool. The same one Callie was in. (laughs) Yeah. So it just, it, you just, you cannot actually put into words the relationships that Jesus gives you through camp. Yeah. So what does it mean for y'all to have a relationship as mother and daughter through camp? How has this grown y'all's relationship? Callie is my mini me. <laughs> through uh, and through. She's all, it's funny because she's also the mini me of my friends. She, mm-hmm. Her talents go beyond just the things I can do. She can do the things that I can do. Callie helped me put cabins together. The list. The yeah. names. <laughs> the, oh, mom, these two campers. Be careful. <laughs> you know. Um, oh yeah, you're right. We need to get them with their friends and and but she checked cabins with me. She sees details. Um, she has learned to see details through my organizational work at yeah. Camp Chioka. But she's also Lindy Loveland's mini me. This child can paint and and do the creative things that Lindy does. And so Camp has given her given her other mothers. Yeah. Um, you know Tammy Parker. Our, our beloved friend who's the nurse out here for years and years and years. Callie called her other mother for years and, <laughs> years and years and years and years. The fact that I knew what this place gave me in the form of Chris Howard and Mike Kellett, I knew that it was going to give my kids significant adults that they could turn to. Because what if I'm not here anymore? Yeah. Callie's got to have adults in her life that she loves like a parent that will nurture her and take care of her and, Camp gave her that. Karen, Lindy, Tammy, Carrie, all those women who she knows she can count on. Camp gave that to her. Yeah. It's incredible for a mother to know that she's giving her children the foundation of belonging and other adults to make sure she gets to heaven. Yes. I mean, that's my number one job, but I'll take all the help I can get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Kyle, what's it been like to see your mom here? Like, What's your favorite thing about seeing her? Maybe that like you want to embody or something. 
Oh, totally her, just her servant's heart. Because I struggle with, like, being intentional and just, like, you don't always want to serve. Like, no. <laughs> just being honest and just, like, for 10 years, you, you just, this, like, she would just start in February and just start with registration. And, I mean, we did this all the way through the end of July. So, like, I don't even know how, like, six months out of the year. Yeah. Just devoted to serving camp and just, like, how admirable that is in her and just, like, her wanting to um, serve so willingly and so intentionally just the way that she does, especially here. Mm -hmm. um, but even bringing that home and, like, back to school and just, like, so I just I just find myself going out of the way and people are like, why do you do this? And I just think, like, I don't know, I just, I just want to have that servant's heart like mom. And yeah. It just inspires me in, like, everything that I try to do. I love that so much. And... To be Callie's mom and the mom to three, not just Callie. <laughs> There's other kids. Um, what does that mean to you, like, to be their mother? Um, I had um, – Mike and I were married for eight years before John Thomas was born, and I have three children in heaven already, so it was hard for me to have kids. Mm -hmm. So just the fact of being a mother was something I always prayed for and wanted and cherished very much. Um, and my older son – was junior staff out here and worked as a senior counselor for years. And uh, I'm sure that Silas will follow in his siblings' uh, footsteps. Um, but, you know, being a mom and having the having my legacy of camp to share with my kids means everything. And, and I've always wanted to be that mom to, you know, other counselors and campers here at camp. Um, one of Callie's camper buddies Brett calls me mom never calls me Miss Missy and I love it and I call him son yeah. and that's you just you have that role and and I'm a teacher in the real world and so that's kind of my role there mm -hmm. as well so I don't know if I answered your question but um it's just like so ingrained in your identity it is it's part of my identity and where do you see like biblically like are there people like you look to in the bible and stuff as inspiration or how are you motivated in that um well, I mean, my main motivation is Jesus. Yeah. He's who I look to. He's who I want to please. He's who I talk to. He's who I want to share. Um, I want, I love, you know, of all the jobs I've ever had out here, being a Bible teacher is my favorite. Sitting in the woods with a group of girls and opening the word and watching them interact with it and watching them understand a truth and having them bring a question that I can help them find the answer to in the scriptures. Um, helping them to understand the power of praying and the the awesomeness of your ability to do that and to call on him. And sometimes you have to wait. Mm -hmm. I have a prayer request that I've been praying for 23 years and I'm still praying it. I don't have that answer yet, yeah. but that's okay because I'm going to keep praying nice. and keep waiting. But to, 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 give all of that to share all of that with our the future our future church that's powerful because the world needs jesus yeah. desperately and so we again like i said before we fill ourselves up here so that we can go away from here and pour ourselves out yeah to touch back on one of your other questions um that's just another thing that just severely inspires me about my mom it's just like her love for jesus and like I just, I just, I want that. Yeah. I just, one of my, one of the, one of the sweet memories that I just have for myself from camp is like, um, mom's always been like high school Bible teacher. Even when she was a director, she was always high school Bible teacher. And I just remember just every time, every day, just walking out of chapels and just looking around and seeing Missy in her cabin, just still praying, <laughs> still always the last cabin to leave huddle groups, always yeah, the first whoops. there. <laughs> She just can't get enough of it, and it just inspires me to also just, God. I just can't wait to can't get enough of it. Yeah. For both of y'all, what is the power of prayer? Because I am inspired by both of you and, like, your intentionality in prayer. So what are just your thoughts on prayer? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I get to talk this to This is your creator. question. <laughs> well, I mean, think about it. The creator of the universe wants to talk to me. He wants to hear from me. He wants me. And not only that, he wants to be able to provide what you ask. Oh, right. That, that just blows my mind. Yeah. You know, one thing we've done at camp before is we've gotten up before sunrise mm -hmm. and gone out in the field with our Bibles and 
watched creation wake up and praise him. Mm. <laughs> so I'm sitting here and the sun's coming up and the stars are twinkling out and the birds are starting to sing. And I'm thinking, you know, if they can praise him, how much more does it mean to him <laughs> that I choose to? You know what I'm saying? So just the fact that in prayer, I get to praise him and I get to commune with him and I get to tell him and he knows already, but, um, I, a good, good friend at church has a cousin who's like a sister to her who's struggling with the horrible C word. I hate cancer. And this morning God put her on my heart and I was praying just earnestly, I know you love her more than I do, and I know yeah. you see her, and I, I know that your will is for her healing, and we are selfish because we want her healing here now. But just the fact to work all that out, he knows everything I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. He knows everything I'm feeling. He knows the total situation. I don't have to explain it to him, yeah. but I get to work it out in my heart and my mind with him. Like, Do you ever go to a parent or a friend and you just need to talk a situation out yes. so that you can come to grips with it and you can understand it. Yeah. Okay, that's me and my father. He knows everything, but I don't have a grip on it yet. So I'm going to talk it out with him and petition him and maybe lay my head and cry to him. And it's just like he's <laughs> sitting there doing, yes. you know, just tell me, honey. Just tell it all to me. And then I walk away with that sense of, I've laid it all out there and I don't have to worry about it anymore and he's going to carry it for me and I can yes. keep going. I can keep going. I always say that about my dad is like my dad here on earth is no matter what I do, he's always going to know. He'll figure it out. Like he's just a really good dad in that way. And I'm like, when I go to God, like God already knows, mm -hmm. but with my dad here on earth, he is just so touched when I like care to share things with mm -hmm. him and like, that's what strengthens the relationship is when I tell him, even if he already knows. Mm -hmm. So the same with God. God already knows. But if we bring it to him, right, and so, so much more. And we're not always eloquent, and we don't always know what to say. And yeah. sometimes situations overwhelm us. So I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit because many times I'll just say, God, and I'll just sit there and I'll say, okay, Holy Spirit, you're on. And you see you with the I don't know how to deal yeah. with this. I don't know what to say. I don't, I'm, I'm struggling. And I can just kind of rest. And I think it's important when we pray to sometimes be quiet, mm -hmm. to just be still, you know, like with the connection open, because there are many ways that God speaks to us. I'm not saying I'm waiting for an audible voice or anything. I'm just saying, um, I feel, you know, when one of the things we love about camp is when the wind blows through the trees and we say it's God noticing us yeah. and going, yeah. Good job. I'm proud of you. I'm seeing you. I'm watching. You got this, you know. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes when you're just still, you know, that's a great fulfillment, a great thing about the avenue of prayer. Yes. Yeah. Kelly, what has prayer meant to you? Like, I know that's something you've been growing in a lot. So what has intentionality in that meant? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I just, I know I've talked to you a lot and talked to my mom a lot about just, I think it just starts with the desire. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if you don't always want to, you want to want to. Yes. And so just having that desire and wanting to be better about praying intentionally is almost all the drive that I need to just sit down and, I hate to say force myself because it's, but like just sit down and make myself yeah. pray. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess it's just the want to want to do it yeah. is enough. Yes, absolutely. And I know that y'all's relationship with God goes so much here mm -hmm. every summer and is stretched and pulled and all these things. Mm -hmm. So how do you carry on that relationship outside of just the summer months? With each other? With each other and with God. Well, I mean, just communication, um, the love that we have for each other, mm -hmm. the um, desire to grow in the knowledge of Christ. We both want to live a life worthy of the calling of Christ. That is our biggest goal. And so as we grow close, closer to him, we grow closer to each other because just as we're not afraid when we pray to tell God everything, Callie is not afraid to tell me. Um, um, she knows whatever she's said or done or struggles with, um, just like God listens to her, I'm going to listen to her and I'm going to help her get through it. Um, 
And so, uh, luckily, you know, we live in the same town as camp. So, uh, even not during the summer, there's retreats, there's reasons for us to come out here and get a breath of camp, Mm -hmm. uh, get that breath of camp to sustain us, uh, to keep going. And even though I'm not a director anymore and I'm not here full time anymore, um, the memories and the history of camp and the fact that camp is continuing in my family through my kids still gives me that breath of fresh air and gratefulness and, you know, love Mm -hmm. uh, for this place. Um, And we could talk for, you know, hours. I could tell you stories, you know, about the time Karen and I fought a spider in the bathhouse (laughs) or picked up potatoes off the side of the road when a potato chip company's truck broke down and, (laughs) We cooked every kind of potato imaginable all summer long for the so staff funny. to eat. And yeah, we, then we didn't eat potatoes the rest of the year. <laughs> um, just funny, funny stuff. Fun, fun stuff. Yeah. Camp, is, camp is just fun and just meaningful. And you build up those memories yeah. and those histories. And then we'll be sitting around at home and Gal will say, hey, you, do you remember? I remember doing that the other day, actually. <laughs> and we talked for hours. And we'll start talking about it and laughing about it and and didn't he fall in the pool? And did y'all break into the country store? <laughs> Maybe we did. I was, I was a follower at that time. <laughs> you know? uh, so, I mean, it's just something that's part of the dialogue in yeah. our life. Camp is part of our dialogue year-round all the time. So, I know y'all's family loves camp so much. I love camp so much. Like, all of us counselors do. How do you, and this might be more of a Miss Missy question, but how do you keep camp like after all these years of connection to it how do you keep god as the angle and not like camp as the angle like camp to drive you closer to god does it make sense so i mean you just just like with anything in your life you're you remind yourself i mean why am i here why are we doing this um as much fun as we have at camp the spiritual aspect of it has always been uh the most important thing, you know, what is our key verse? What, what is it that we're trying to grow in and work yeah. on and, uh, and remember and, um, you just, that's just, you just live that. Yeah. That's just part of who you are. That's right. Verse this year is keep your eyes set on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. Sure. Yeah. So keeping our eyes there. And then what would you tell yourself like Callie before coming in this mm-hmm. summer, your first year as a counselor, and Miss Missy, what would you tell yourself, like, kind of just before coming to start with? It's a long time ago, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, I came as an elementary kid. Um, and so for the young ones, the most important thing about camp is building the relationship. You build the relationship and you keep them coming so that then when they're teenagers. Yeah, I truly believe that I would not be the person that I was, and I, I would not have the relationship with God that I do if it weren't this place. Yeah. Like, I truly believe that. And I'm so grateful for just, I don't know, I guess just the opportunity and the blessing that mm-hmm. camp is, and just like the people that it has given me. Um, I just think about Samantha Watts. Mm-hmm. Um, Samantha was my counselor, pro, I think 2010, 11. Um, and she, um, you know, quit working at camp. She's just too old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> had to get a real job. Um, moved to Boston, and I hadn't seen her in seven years. Yeah, I want to say. And in middle school, I was an eighth grader, and we took like a school trip at the end of the summer. I mean, at the end of the school year to uh, like a New York Boston trip. Yeah. And I texted Sam. hadn't I hadn't texted her seriously in like so long, yeah. seven years. And I was like, hey, Sam, this is Callie, if you even have my number. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be in Boston. Like, whatever. Like, that's all I said. Yeah. Like, I, that's all I said. I was like, I'm coming to your city. And she's like, oh, what's your schedule? And I just sent her a picture of our itinerary. Literally didn't think twice. We're sitting at a Hard Rock Cafe in the middle of this Boston Square. And she walks in the door. <laughs> Specifically came she to see Callie. She rode an hour and a half train from where she lived. Like, from where she was. Yeah. To come see me for... 10 minutes. That is it's just, you just, you just don't find that anywhere else. You just don't find that friendship and that relationship and just like, like just Sam just played a huge part in like 
securing the foundation. Yeah. Like, that is the most important thing in your life. Like, God just so intentionally loving you through her. And God's like, I am this intentional, and I will go an hour and a half on the train. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that was just true for me. I brought a postcard that one of my high school Bible teachers from here at camp had never met her before, spent one summer with her as our Bible teacher, and she sent me a postcard in the mail after camp. Um, just how meaningful that was, just that relationship of I see you, yeah. I love you, you're important to me. Um, and because our relationships are in Christ, that makes that bond stronger. That's why Sam rode a train yeah. over an hour to see Kelly. That's why Katie sent me a postcard. That's why Karen Bromley and I are sisters, Yeah, you know, because of just going through the desire to grow closer to God. I mean, he is the ultimate relationship giver. Mm, yes. So you can build relationships with people at your college. You can build relationships with the people at your job. And they're great. Mm-hmm. And they're great. But see, our foundation is in Christ. Yeah. I mean, that's the stickiest glue there is. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what makes it even more meaningful. Yes, absolutely. And then what do you all want to tell yourself? A couple months from now, when you've been away from camp for a while and you're back, quote, in, like, the real world. One thing for me, sorry, one thing mm-hmm. for me is just, especially growing up out here, like, like literally since I was, like, three or four years old. Um, I mean, that's 20, 30 counselors every summer. Just yeah. 30 new friends every year. And so I think for me, it's just, like, it's such a blessing to be able to, like, have so many people to, to go to for, like, especially – being like younger, mm-hmm. um, just having people to turn to and to ask, and I never feel like, oh, I don't have anyone to go to. Yeah, I always have so many, so many friends and just mentors and counselors that so I've you, had in the past. Even and even if they weren't my counselor, yeah, just turning to and having so many God given um, friendships that that I'll have forever. That's another beautiful thing about Camp Chica. Um, like, I have friends from school, but, like, I mean, I just graduated high school. Like, some of these people I'll never see again. Some of these yeah. people I'll never talk to again. But, like, I, I hadn't talked to Sam in seven years, and, like, she she literally hopped on the train to come see me. Like, yeah. Uh, those friendships never, never end. Yes. So, we're at camp for the summer, and then we deploy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, camp is out, all out there in the real world. And so, when we need some, when we need reassurance or whatever we connect with a camp person yeah and we build each other up and we you know remind each other of the mission and we set out again and then we're able to you know um back in my day as a camper and we didn't have social media we didn't have cell phones chris would type up a roster with everybody's name and address i love that and so we because we communicated by writing each other letters or picking up a landline and actually calling and so, you know, we would write letters throughout the year. Yeah. And it, I have a stack of, of letters from when I was a teenager of friends that connected. And, you know, um, I did meet my husband out here uh, his senior year, after his senior year, um, or before his senior year. He and David came to camp. And, mm-hmm. like, we weren't really friends or anything. So it got to be November, and I've got my camp roster out, and I'm thinking I'm going to send Christmas cards to my friends from camp. And I got to his name, and I thought, not really sure if he'll remember me, yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and send him one because, job, because he's a camp <laughs> friend, you know? Um, and so my husband had struggles in his home and he tell me, told me, of course, years later, how blown away he was that he would get a Christmas card from me, how much it yeah. meant to him that because of camp, this girl sent me a card. And five years ago when we were cleaning out his parents' house because his parents had passed away, mm-hmm. My sister-in-law found that card. I remember that. Wow. He had kept it. Oh there it was. Word. So I reached out to him because he came to camp. Yeah. You know. I just think we should all start writing letters again. <laughs> <laughs> Write letters again. <laughs> Y'all got a bunch of <laughs> You can keep them. Yeah, have plenty of stamps. <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of stamps. That is true. <laughs> we had a misorder. <laughs> can I pray for us? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I know you'll Father, thank you so much for this family and for the role that they have played in my life and the life of so many others at camp. God, thank you 
for just having this mother-daughter relationship for us to all learn from. Thank you for the way that Miss Missy loves Callie, and thank you for the way that Callie respects and adores and loves her mom. And God, we just ask that that same intentionality would outpour into our relationship with you, that we would feel just as seen and just as pursued and just as encouraged by who you are, God. Thank you for camp, and thank you for the way that it draws us closer to you, not because camp is the end goal, but because we're at this place that we can draw closer to your spirit and draw closer to your heart and become more and more like you. Thank you for friendships that last, and we pray over all of our campers listening that they would have the courage to come out here and that they would make friends that last a lifetime and that those friends would continue to build one another up and encourage one another and that they would be intentional prayer warriors and keep bringing more and more people to know Jesus. Lord, I love you so much. I am so grateful for these friends of mine, and I ask that anyone listening would be blessed and encouraged by their words um, and just so confident that you're a God who listens, you're a God who cares, you're a God of relationships, and that there is just freedom and joy to be found in that. Jesus, we love you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all so much for listening. Since the kingdom is not built in the media room, it is our hope that you take these ideas into real life conversations with friends, family, and the Lord. Be sure to find us anywhere you can scroll at Camp Yoga and live knowing that you are loved. Mm -hmm.